Hey guys, Jay back here in the movie room, and this is our Grumpy Old Gentleman on Film Part 2 Movie Marathon. This is where, where each uh, one of the six members pick two films for the other members to watch. And uh, our good friend Bob of the North uh, picked two very good and different films for me to watch, very different films. Uh, the first one is uh, 2007's American Gangster, and the second one was 2009's Inglorious Bastards by my favorite film director, Quentin Tarantino. And um, we'll, we'll talk about Inglorious Bastards first. Uh, th this, uh, I watched this uh, back, I guess, in 2010 when it first came out on DVD. Uh, and I wasn't impressed with it. I liked everything of Quentin, Quentin Tarantino's uh, filmography up till this, and I don't know why I didn't like it, but I remember sitting in my living room drinking beer. Uh, that's when I was a beer drinker. I drank beer every night, and I was pretty well half-tanked watching this, and I didn't care for it. And I'd say that's why I was uh, just wasn't in the mood to watch it. I was in the mood to do other things. But uh, I'd put, put off watching my Blu-ray of it for years and years and years. Uh, of course, I, I liked everything that came out after this. Uh, Django Unchained and uh, The Hateful Eight. Uh, and of course, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. But... Uh, I always meant to give us another chance because I like everything that Quentin done before this too. Uh, Death Proof and uh, uh, Pulp Fiction, my second favorite film of all time. Uh, Reservoir Dogs. Um, but uh, for some reason, you know, like I said, uh, I just didn't care too much for it. But I watched this the other night for the second time and it improved greatly. Uh, of course, uh, tells the story of Nazis in Germany during Hitler's wartime and all that, and Quentin takes very, very uh, creative license. It's his own uh, type of uh, fairy tale, alternate history, uh, where nothing happened. You know, of course, it's based on true story, Hitler's in it, uh, but nothing happens as it happened in real life uh, back during World War II. Uh, lots of funny scenes. Uh, great stars. Brad Pitt's really good in this. Chris Chris Waltz, uh, Michael Fassbender, uh, Eli Roth is in this as well. Um, and uh, Chris Waltz, he was nominated for many awards uh, for uh, playing a Nazi uh, criminal guy uh, officer. Uh, called the Jew Hunter, and uh, a pretty bad guy in this film, but a good performance by him. And uh, he's always interesting when he's in Quentin Tarantino's movies. He he was in the uh, next Tarantino film too, which was uh, Django Unchained. It came out after this, and I think he was nominated for another Academy Award in that. I don't think he won, but uh, he he won for this one. And uh, Brad Pitt is hilarious in this. Uh, lots of really typical Quentin Tarantino dialogue. Uh, it was, uh, when this came out in 2009, it was nominated for Best Picture, uh, Best Screenplay, dire Best Director. Um, uh, I think uh, eight Academy Award nominations, as a matter of fact. Uh, but uh, Chris Waltz, you know, won for Supporting Actor. And, uh, Shame Quentin didn't win for Best Screenplay, but he was nominated. But uh, I really, really enjoyed this film. Uh, typical long film, lots of dialogue, lots of humorous scenes. Um, yeah, and I, I like the alternate uh, timeline. Uh, of course, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood has a uh, alternate timeline, too, uh, with the Sharon Tate murders, to it has a happy ending um, and this has a happy humorous ending too very humorous ending and 
Yeah, when this when this came out, it was his biggest hit until uh, Django and Chain came out a couple of years later. This made three hundred and uh, three hundred twenty one million dollars worldwide, and uh, that's pretty good for a Quentin Tarantino film. Pretty good for any film, but uh, yeah, uh, I enjoyed this much much better. Uh, I would give this one a solid. Uh, out of four stars, I probably need to watch it again, but I'd, I'd give it three and a half stars, M maybe four stars. I really, really enjoyed it, and I really appreciate you for picking this one, Bob, uh, to give me another chance to watch it. And the second film he picked for me was uh, 2007's American Gangster. Um, good film. Uh, I love Denzel Washington. Russell Crowe is a great actor too, but I uh, really kind of always followed Denzel Washington's career. Uh, pretty much like him in anything he's in. And uh, I remember when this came out in theaters, I had high hopes after seeing the trailer for it. And uh, when I first watched this Blu-ray of it, when I bought it uh, back in 2008, 2009, I was disappointed with it. Uh, good direction by Ridley Scott. Uh, Ridley Scott, man, a really good director. He can direct just about anything. Horror, sci-fi, action, uh, drama. Uh, he, he, his name is on a lot of films you wouldn't expect his name to be on because he, he does pretty much anything. But... Uh, uh, Denzel plays uh, Harlem mob boss uh, Frank Lucas, which uh, this is based on a true story, and I use that uh, term loosely, based on a true story. Uh, and uh, Russell Crowe, he plays the uh, detective named uh, Richie Roberts, uh, who follows uh, Frank Lucas throughout the film, tries to bring him down, uh, bring him to justice, because uh, Denzel's a drug dealer in this film. And uh, from what I read about it, and, and, and this film gets a lot of love, and like I said, I liked it, I just don't love it, uh, but uh, it, get, uh, it gets a lot of love, but a lot of people fuss and complain that um, it's, it's, there's based on a true story, uh, it's far from the truth, a lot of this stuff didn't happen, and there were lawsuits uh, against Universal Pictures, who uh, produced this film, who released it, the, uh, the studio released it, uh, from the DEA agents uh, when, when it came out, uh, you know, because the story was so fabricated. Uh, a lot of people say that uh, Frank Lucas, uh, portrayed by Denzel Washington, uh, was nothing at all like like that in real life. Uh, Frank Lucas was uneducated, uh, poorly spoken, uh, unlike anything Den Denzel played in this film. Um, but uh, yeah, they, they said a lot of stuff didn't happen in real life in this film. And uh, I'll, uh, like I said, it's a good film, but I was disappointed when it came out. And uh, it hasn't improved much with a second or third viewing of it either. But uh, I know people like this movie. Uh, just I'm not the biggest fan of it. Um, and it was it was a big box office hit. I think it made something like uh, close to fifty million dollars opening weekend, which uh, that, that's a pretty sizable hit. And it wound up making uh, two hundred sixty six million dollars, but it cost a hundred million dollars to make. And I'm sure it was more than that with advertising and, um, you know, cost of prints and everything. But uh, big budget made some, made some money, I suppose. But uh, I'm, I'm glad you picked these films for me, Bob. This one, out of four stars, I'd, I'd probably give it two and a half stars. Uh, maybe three but probably closer to two and a half. It's not one in my collection that I look forward to revisiting anytime soon. Uh, though I do love the great the, the actors in it, and uh, it just uh, see how long is this? Um, it's got a really long running time, just under three hours, two hours and fifty-seven minutes, and it seems like it's two hours and fifty-seven minutes. 
uh, long stretches where I don't know, nothing really happens. I think it's kind of long and boring in a lot of parts. But there's some good stuff in it. Ruby D, the black actress, uh, she's really good in this film too. And she was nominated for a Supporting Actress Academy Award for this film too. And she's really good in this film too. But uh, yeah, I'm, gl I'm, I'm glad that the two contemporary films definitely like this one a hell of a lot more. Uh, but they were two awesome picks, Bob. Uh, Bob, who goes to the show and saw saw a lot of classic movies on the big screen, and uh, yeah, thank you, Bob, and uh, look forward to uh, Ian's picks next. Ian picked two films for me, one of which is Scarface from 1983, uh, the Brian De Palma version, which is a classic film and I will let you know my thoughts on that next week or maybe just in a few days uh, if I get a get to watch it here in the next day or two I, I watched it not too long ago I probably watched it three or four months ago because I just bought the 4k of it and the 4k looks fantastic but uh, and another one he picked a, uh, a Charlie Chaplin film for me uh, the kid or city lights he said it really didn't matter which one I watched, and I'm sure it probably doesn't matter which one, which Chaplin film I watch, as long as I watch a silent Chaplin film. The, the guy, the guy seemed to want to get me to uh, embrace silent films, which I don't think I have any. I know I don't have any in my collection, so I will have to stream uh, the uh, Charlie Chaplin film that I pick. And I plan on watching it on YouTube because there, there's a few on YouTube. So what the hell? Uh, as much as I don't want to, I really don't want to run out and buy uh, a $30 uh, Criterion of a Chaplin movie that uh, I may not like. But if I do like it, I'll definitely be adding more Chaplin films to my collection, rest assured. But uh, yeah, a Scarface and a Charlie Chaplin film, those are my next uh, two films to watch, and I'll be filming a video in a few days. But uh, until then, thanks for watching, and uh, everybody stay safe and go watch a movie. Bye.